Hey guys, so I published my top 10 characters in Dragon Ball Legends video two days ago now, two or three days ago, something like that. Um, we got a bunch of comments here, so I figured this was a good time to go through some of the responses I got and um, just give my thoughts and uh, opinions on what people are talking about here. Um, I did do this for the last video as well, the, pr the previous top 10 list, which I believe was back in July. I think that was the Super Vegito, the Ultra Super Vegito update. So it's been two months since I've done a video like this, and I figure I don't want to do this like every release, but if we get like a significant shift in uh, the meta, then I do probably want to do a video like this. So like when Trunks released, when LF Trunks came out, I feel like he didn't really make as big of an impact as like this Cooler did or as Ultra Super Vegito did. So I feel like this is definitely a uh, an update that warrants a video like this. Um, Trunks is definitely going to make an impact though once we do get more hybrid buffs for sure. Okay, so let's go take a look here. Um, I have this sorted by top comments. Maybe next time I'll sort it by newest comments. But let's go ahead and take a look here. I like how you define these lists as meta snapshots because Super Vegeta is probably still the second best unit in the game on a strict tier list. But since the number one unit completely shuts him down on a team he's on, he's realistically way down on the list. Yeah, I can make lists that are purely just based off of like vacuum who's better, but that doesn't really serve a purpose, right? I mean, sure. Uh, it, it'll give you a, I guess, apples to oranges comparison because I, I don't like direct. I, when I make these lists, I don't particularly enjoy directly comparing like a character like LF Cooler to like Yellow Tapion. They serve completely different roles. Purple Whis versus like Ultra Super Vegito. They're just not there to do the same functions on your team. So it's kind of strange comparing those characters. And yeah, if you're talking about a character that's going to just dominate the match, then of course you're going to choose the you know the offensive unit most of the time. But you have characters like Revival Frieza, uh, Purple Whis, um, who are able to help the team out in different ways that doesn't include just raw damage. So I think a, a, a list like this, where it's sort of geared towards being a meta snapshot as opposed to which units are just straight up better than the other characters, is going to be much more effective and it's going to be much more useful for you guys to see. Uh, these are the best characters right now in this specific meta, but again, this could change down the line. All of a sudden, we get, I don't know, like a, an insanely strong, um, I don't know, Super Saiyan 4 Goku and Vegeta tag character for Legends Festival. All of a sudden, GT is like way better. Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta makes a comeback. Yellow Oob makes a comeback. Like all these things could happen uh, depending on how they, they want to move forward here. So that's the main reason why I make the list like that. Uh, top 10 units aren't actually a group of units, but a singular unit. The Heraclan Legend Extreme Beto is so good. He takes up the entire 10 spots. Yeah, next to uh, Ice Shenron. Uh, didn't put EX Turles number one because he didn't want the community abusing how OP he is. Yeah, I, I, you know what's funny about that EX Turles thing? I've only pulled him like a handful of times since he released. Uh, I find it funny how last one made this video, Ultra Vegeta was number one, but Game Press had him at like fifth. Then recently Game Press made a new list and put Vegeta number one, and now I put him at sixth. Yeah, the problem, I think it, it, they, they've just, for over on the Game Press side of things, I haven't really uh, kept up with it too much, but I think it was a bit delayed, um, the speed at which they released their tier list. So that might have to do with um, the reasoning behind like the discrepancy in the rankings, but I think... Once they update their list for LF Cooler, he will probably drop significantly on their list as well. Uh, right now, Cooler could be a big problem, but I think he's going to be uh, good for the game. He's going to keep the Super Saiyan tag in check for the foreseeable future, and that's going to make people want to th rethink about bringing a Super Saiyan on their team, which means more variety. Hopefully. I mean, that was obviously their intention with this Cooler. I think um, them specifically targeting other tags to counter is a good idea. The only problem that I have with this cooler is that for some reason they like hyper hyper focused on targeting yellow vegeto the yellow ultra super vegeto with this cooler right very very clear the problem i have with that is like we have ha we have had this character in the game since three months prior to vegeto releasing that i would argue is number one way more annoying to fight than vegeto and number two potentially just better than him in a lot of instances and that's the androids I think the androids are way worse for this game than Vegito. I obviously Vegito is insanely good. 
when I am, this is only my opinion, by the way, when I'm playing the game, I don't feel like I want to shut the game off when I'm fighting Vegito. Sure, sometimes, you know, you get your rush gas, he's comboing you for 50 years, and he, he can sometimes be annoying to fight against, but I literally despise fighting the androids every time. Every single time somebody uses the androids against me, I just don't want to play the game. So I think it would have been smarter on their end to release a super hyper-focused counter to the androids first before Vegito, especially considering that Vegito released multiple months after the androids did. And I feel like leaving the androids unchecked for this long is just a very bad decision. Um, but I agree with what you're saying and the fact that it's going to make people think twice with who they bring. I do agree with that. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is one we just looked at. I think it's a good list. I actually really like the androids. Cooler, a uh, cool, cool duo character that is fun to play. Nice to see eighteen in the meta again. Um, I, can't, I honestly don't know if this is sarcasm or not, but yeah, the androids are very good. Um, okay, let's expand this. Okay, I don't know why I keep scrolling up like that. It's actually very annoying. Uh, let's see what this is about. Uh, it's a special care to ensure Cooler would rightfully replace the androids on his own flagship team. Was worried he wouldn't measure up to them, but they did it. I do believe they tested him and intentionally gave him that strong uh, sub count ability. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's something that they kind of have to test. The way that I think they test things, and I don't know if this is for sure, I'm just, this is just me guessing, is they will test the character in phases. So, for example, at least this is the way I would do it, is I would, you know, design a character and then test them out and then make tweaks to their kit and like add some things, remove some things. And then as that's going on, as the character is being developed during those phases, do testing phases like in between tweaks to their kits. And that's how I think I would be testing characters if I was, if I was in charge of balance in this game. Because I think, I think what they could have done maybe for a lot of character releases, I think the androids probably this was the case with them, is they designed them like just from nothing. They tested them. And then what they probably did was they probably made a bunch of changes at once. And then they tested them a second time after they made all those changes instead of one by one changing certain aspects and then doing incremental testing in between them changing certain aspects to determine which aspects of the character are too good. So they probably skipped a bunch of phases and then made the androids just too good. Uh, but for an effect like this, they're giving to Cooler where it's literally his unique trait where it, 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 it like he doesn't have a unique gauge, but his ability to lock in for two counts on every strike card. That's like what he is known. He, that, that's what he's going to be known for for a long time. That that's his unique trait that he's bringing to the table. I think for something like that and with something of how obviously overpowered it is, they probably had to test it. And I wouldn't be surprised if we saw characters moving forward specifically designed to sort of counter that mechanic. Right, we see with like Revival Cell, LF uh, Green Vegeta, um, they have the ability to reduce their sub count whenever an enemy is hit. And because of the way that Cooler's mechanic works, where it's not a um, no switching mechanic, it's an increased sub count mechanic. So with that said, they could create a character like, I don't know, what if it's a mixture, like a combination of, I don't know, Yellow Angel Vegeta and Red Revival Cell where not only are they reducing their sub count when an ally is hit, but they're also reducing ally sub count when they're hit. That could really throw this cooler off like a lot. So there's ways they can sort of build counters to this character. And I think that's probably something they had in mind when they were designing him. But for some characters that they've released in this game, like there's no way they there's no way they thoroughly and actually did legitimate testing the way that they should have on some of these characters like androids, Red Zenkai Gohan, like original uh, Blue Vegeta Blue. There, there's no way. There's actually just no way. Um, Alright, is this going to kick me up again? No, it didn't. Okay. Uh, I think units like LF Majin Vegeta and LF Vegeta Blue's value just went up due to them not being Super Saiyans. Yeah, for sure. I think I think exactly. Uh, Vegito Blue and Majin Vegeta, those two blue characters specifically, are much better now. But the issue with them is that even if they are not Super Saiyans. You are pretty much precluded from bringing Super Saiyans at all into the match. So for example, if you run Majin Vegeta, and um, you're, let's say you're running Majin Vegeta on Vegeta Clan, and you wanna run the green trunks, you know, the, the LF green trunks that's fairly new still. The fact that that trunks is a Super Saiyan means that a co the cooler on your team is going to be type neutral versus 
Masha Vegeta, even though Masha Vegeta himself is not a Super Saiyan. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, but I do think that Majin Vegeta and Vegeta Blue's value went up a lot. I've actually seen a lot more people uh, starting to use Vegeta Blue um, post Cooler release. Uh, and that's obviously because of how good he is versus Cooler. So that makes sense. Um, I feel like you could uh, argue that Revival Frieza could have been could have taken Cell's spot. Cell on most of his teams ends up being Rush Fodder because you'd rather switch into Cooler to build him up rather than Cell. Revival Frieza will be used for a while because of his utility while Cell will be Power Crept because he's primarily only damage. Yeah, I could easily see that happening. Um, I think if you want to put Frieza at 10 and sort of bump Cell down honorable mentions, I would be okay with that. Revival Frieza was one of the characters where I really, really wanted to fit him into the top 10, but I just couldn't. He was like, he was like the, the, the fringe character that I had. It was either going to be top of honorable mention or number 10 on the list. And um, I went with Cell because I think Cell is a better core character for multiple teams. Uh, future androids and powerful opponent. I think if it was between like Revival Frieza and Cell, I would probably more often choose Cell to be run on powerful opponent over um, Revival Frieza, but it's close. I mean, it's, like, at the end of the day, I think that's more of a play style choice. Do you value the revive over the Cell's Dragon Ball destruction and cover change abilities? Do you value the revive over, you know, Cell's superior damage output as ultimate? Um, and it's also going to be a meta decision as well, right? Especially once we start getting more hybrids, you know, superhero comes out, we get Beast Gohan, we get Ultimate Gohan, uh, characters that are able to pair up well with the LF Green Trunks. Once that era of the meta starts to come out and, you know, these hybrid teams start come, start being more, um, I guess, prevalent, then this cell will undoubtedly, I think, be better than Revival Frieza, but I would not argue with anybody who has a Revival Frieza over cell right now. I've been loving all the Freeze and Cooler 11 both Dokkan Legends. Yeah, they've been doing a lot of LOE and Wicked Bloodline stuff in both games for sure. Um, I've seen so many Majin Vegeta's nowadays. LF Cooler suffers from that neutrality. He's good against Cooler. I liked him uh, being put up in this meta. Yeah, I mean, I I actually, because the way that I structured this video is I had a lot of honorable mentions that I couldn't fit them all on one team. The fact that I didn't have Majin Vegeta in the honorable mentions team doesn't mean that I think he's worse than any of those honorable mentions characters. I feel like he fits right up there alongside those units, and um, I just didn't have enough space in the team <laughs> to put him on there, but I do think he's up there as well. Uh, feel your placings are pretty accurate for the current meta. I have a feeling that Dragon Fist might drop some once he goes off boost. Once hybrids get a boost or two, I can see the LF Trunks being in Dragon Fist's place. I agree with you about how underrated Trunks is. Being able to pull two ultimates on command and vanish restoration are huge for damage output and sustainability. Yeah, that Trunks is, is insane. I had a streak last season. This was a few weeks ago um, where I was using Trunks on the future setup. It was like just massive, like peak Trunks output. I like just maxed him out. It was, I think it was triple Zenkai buff for the Trunks. And then I was running him with um, two other, I think it was future Gohan and blue uh, sort of up Trunks. It was. Full hybrids, full future setups. So you could run like a billion pure, <laughs> pure damage equipment, and that Trunks was—he was single-handedly destroying everything. Like he was ridiculous. So, uh, yeah, I think that Trunks will shoot way up once he uh, gets some more help with the hybrid stuff. Uh, it's honestly a testament to Vegito's insanity how he's number six in the meta with three straight-up busted red units. Yeah, I, I think easily red is the best uh, color in the game. It's not even close right now, but Vegito can still do work, right? It's going to be very scary to use Vegeta right now just because of how dominant Cooler is, how dominant the androids are, how dominant UI Goku is. I think UI Goku is probably a little bit less dominant than he was prior to the quick attack update. Um, but UI Goku can still incinerate Vegeta, right? So there's three super powerful red characters. But Vegito, if you play him right and you play a bit cautiously with him, he can still hold his own for sure. He's, he can still combo for 80 plus combos, right? He can still go type neutral on his green card, on his main ability, on his, uh, not his main ability, on his ultimate when you have a dead ally. Like, he's still up there, and that's insane, considering that he's a yellow character. Yellow is down bad right now. <laughs> yellow as, a, as, an, as, a, as a, a typing in this game is down bad. Um, okay, so this guy's referencing a timestamp. I don't remember exactly what I was talking about here. Uh, the biggest single unit counter is probably always going to be purple children. Oh, no, no, okay, so this guy's talking about when I was, I think I mentioned um red cooler being like the biggest counter ever to yellow vegeto like more than anything else so this guy's referencing chilled being a counter to blue bardock which i definitely understand because he's literally countering the, the id number 
in his unique ability. That is a very targeted counter. But what I meant by my statement that I made in the video is that this is like the single hardest counter to a single character we've ever seen. I think number, because I actually don't think Chill is that big of a counter to Bardock. Bardock can overcome Chill's um, counter, right? Because number one, you have to actually run into a uh, LOE team to fight Chilled. Number two, like, I, I think if you run into a team that's using Chilled and you're using Bardock, you just don't run Bardock. Like, I never understood people that just brought him, like, anyway. <laughs> like, it doesn't make any sense. Um, because the counter is happening in the phase where you pick your characters, right? You just, you just don't pick them. <laughs> it's weird. Um, but what I mean by this is that Cooler versus Super Vegito is probably, I guess this is the best way to say this, is probably the most lopsided uh, matchup ever. Because I think up until this point, the, the, the biggest has been probably Blue Goku uh, versus Red Gohan. That Goku was specifically designed to shove Gohan sort of like out of the meta, um, which kind of worked, but it's like, is everyone using EX Goku? It's kind of the same situation as uh, Chilled versus Bardock. Problem with Cooler is that, yes, everybody is using Cooler. <laughs> so it's not like you're going to queue up with your Vegito team and then like, oh yeah, I just fought 10 matches in a row and I didn't see a single Cooler, so Vegito's still dominant, right? I will tell you that I, I grinded to the top 100 in PvP, and I would say, I don't know, Eight out of ten matches are against a final form cooler, so it's going to be very, very tough to use Vegeta right now. It just, it just, 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 it just is. Um, cooler guaranteed kills Ultra Super Vegito as long as you hit him with one strike card. One strike card plus one ult is enough to kill a Super Vegito from any HP. Like total, it's, it's, it's just you win, you kill him. Beerus is really good, Rao, uh, and free and underrated. Going crazy with all the reds, he's better counter than Ultra Gogeta. Um, I. Here's the thing, Beerus is, is actually solid, right? I I think Beer. I've actually seen a lot of people trying to use Beerus now just because he's obviously not a Super Saiyan and he's blue and he uh, ignores a uh, special cover change to sort of lock in the cooler if you can get him there. But Beerus is just so much worse than Ultra Gogeta that I don't like saying that he's a better counter to cooler because I'd rather just run Gogeta anyway. Even though he's a Super Saiyan, I'd rather just run him. I think he's just a better overall character. His Z ability is better. Uh, he's on more teams. Um, he's better stats. He's better tags, like better equipment. Like he's a better unit. Um, unique gain, all that stuff. Type neutral, the lock. I would just rather use Ultra Gogeta every time. Um, but I do, I do agree with you that I think Beerus actually could see a lot more play now than he did than he would uh, prior to this cooler releasing. Um. I'd say that Ultra Super Vegito is at least five, just because his crazy neutrality and counter, but I don't disagree with the cooler placement. Um, who did I have above Vegito? It was uh, obviously cooler androids, UI, Gogeta, and Dragon Fist. Um, I think Dragon Fist got a massive buff with his cooler releasing. The androids got a massive buff from the quick attack update. Uh, UI Goku, I, I guess that might be the one that you could potentially put Vegito above, but I, I personally would not. I think I, I, I would leave leave it the way I, I had it. Um, but if you want to argue Vegito over him, then I, I could see it. Uh, I think one of the things people might uh, be overestimating about Ultra Vegito is that when there's a Super Saiyan on the enemy team, Cooler goes type neutral against the whole team. Yeah, exactly. That's actually, I just I mentioned that a bit earlier in this video, right? So somebody's like, okay, yeah, um, Majin Vegeta and, and um, Blue, Vegito Blue, are really good counter versus cooler, which is true. That's a true statement. But the problem is you you can't then bring a Super Saiyan character because then they instantly lose their counter to cooler, right? They lose their type advantage <laughs> if you do that. Uh, granted, it's only for 10 counts that they lose type advantage because cooler goes type neutral for just 10 counts, but that is a very big deal. Um, so I, I do agree with what you're saying for sure. Uh, I feel like uh, color red in Legends history is either super good uh, or being the worst color in the meta. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I remember when red was terrible. Remember when there was only one red LF and it was Gohan and it was... Who was the second red LF? Was it Grade 8 Vegeta? Is it actually Grade 8 Vegeta? No, it's not. Now you're making me want to want to search this up. Let, let's see. Who was the second ever red LF? Was it, was it Vegeta? 
No, it was Amasu. We only still have six. I mean, it's not, that's not that little six. Because we, we got a lot of reds back to back to back. We got the androids, then UI Goku, then Cooler. But yeah, it was Red Gohan who came out prior to the first year anniversary. He released, I believe it was March. So it was about, what is that, like nine months into the game, after the game came out, Gohan came out, prior to the first year anniversary. And then we didn't get our second Red LF until the third year anniversary. That is insane. <laughs> but yeah, that, there was definitely a time where red is the worst color for sure. Uh, wish I was skilled enough to use these units before they're false, but I'm getting there. I appreciate the insight and uh, you've taught me how to play the game. Nice. Uh, why is Super Gogeta in top three when Cooler nullifies unfavorable color against the tag? Super Saiyan and Super Gogeta could be in the same situation as Super Vegito. Not talking about how Cooler Strikes destroy Super Gogeta's blues that he gets with his unique gauge. Uh, Cooler Strike does not destroy Super Gogeta's blues. He destroys green cards. Um, and it's 20% damage inflicted to Super Saiyan. Any Super Saiyan uh, tag is in danger with Cooler's passive. Having said this, there's no doubt Cooler uh, came to change meta and he's the best unit in the current meta. Um, so there's a few things about this. Number one, um, Super Gogeta is not going to be in the same situation as Super Vegito because Super Vegito has type disadvantage versus Cooler, whereas Super Gogeta is just going to be neutral, and it's only neutral for 10 counts. Remember that. It's not infinitely neutral. Um, it's kind of like Purple Broly when he came out. He was only neutral. I think it was even worse than Purple Broly. I think Purple Broly was like 15 counts or something because that was terrible. Um, but Cooler is neutral for 10 counts, so it's not like an eternity. Um, and I believe what Gogeta's lock lasts five counts. Even if he's type neutral versus Gogeta, Gogeta can still lock him in and kill him. Even if he's neutral, the one thing I will mention about Cooler is he is not a defensive god. Nobody, no character in this game is a defensive god anymore. There is no defense. It is just the Wild West <laughs> right now. There is no defending anything pretty much. So if Gogeta catches Cooler in a combo, he can kill him even just being type neutral against Cooler. It does not matter. Um, and then, obviously, once Cooler's type neutrality runs out, he has type advantage, and uh, he can nullify special cover change with green card. I think Cooler's, uh, sorry, uh, Gogeta's kit is more well equipped to deal with uh, Cooler than Vegito's is, on top of him not being at a type disadvantage. So I think that's the reason why I put Cooler or I put uh, Gogeta above uh, Vegito, at least in this meta right now. All right, let's expand this. Someone who got shafted hard on Cooler, I found it particularly hard to rank up after its release, to be honest, and this show how unbalanced the game continues to be, and that just saddens me. Uh, denying that Cooler is annoying to fight against the straight-up lying, unit capable of killing Ultra Vegeta with a card and an ultimate isn't fair at all. I mean, that's just the way the game is trending, though. The game, like, this is not, like, a new thing where it's like, oh my god, like, the it's so unbalanced, right? This has actually been a thing. I would say the most like sudden jump that we've gotten was probably the second year anniversary the second year anniversary where we had vegeto blue just dominating everything i mean yeah we had like purple broly prior to that and stuff like that but i would say since the second anniversary we have had a consistent like top three best units in the game that really have dominated pretty much everything this game has to offer right so since then we've had this sort of environment where the meta is just dominated by the top few characters. I think it's only gotten worse when the androids came out, because I think the androids, in my opinion, are probably the most egregious character they've ever released. Um, number one, they're just annoying to fight. Number two, they can switch typings. We kind of saw shades of this with Goku and Vegeta, but Goku and Vegeta are nowhere near as broken as the androids. Um, so this is not a new concept, but I do agree with you. It is it doesn't make a lot of sense to, to make a game that's PvP based and have this be what the environment is. Uh, Cooler is so dominating, I've had to switch up my team for the first time in a while. Had been running leader Tapion, uh, UI Goku, Zenkai 7, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Vegeta, with Zenkai 7 Beerus buffing Vegeta. Zenkai 7 Vegeta Blue and Red God Goku as a health buffer. I've dropped the Zenkai 7 Beerus to bring in Blue Beerus, with the Zenkai buff from Vegeta Blue as nullify cover change for 30 counts on main and being able to lock in and snipe Cooler has made things much easier. Yeah, again, I've seen a lot of people using Be uh, Blue Beerus, even on like very weird non-conventional teams like blue beerus in the leader slot next to like the androids <laughs> and like Whis. i've actually seen that team before so literally replacing ui goku on uh, a team like that it's just ridiculous uh, but people are really really trying to uh, find ways to counter this cooler and that just goes to show how broken this cooler is 
Uh, it's crazy to see Ultra Kaioken Blue Goku, a guy who ran the meta for a period of time in the honorable mention section. Goku, Vegeta ain't even here. It's crazy how much the meta has changed. Yeah, it's just power creep has been ridiculous. I think um, Blue Kaioken Goku, the Ultra Blue Kaioken Goku, is definitely a good enough character by himself, not counting the meta. I think he is a good enough character by himself to where like a massive god key buff could bring him back up in addition to just reds in general falling off because i think that's the main thing that's holding him back a lot recently it's just there's just too many reds in the meta like they they released ultra blue cow and goku and then the very next release was the androids like what what are they doing <laughs> what, what kind of move is that and then after that we have ui goku like just two bombshell red characters releasing one after the other after a yellow character like there there's they, they they do not plan these things um there's no way there's actually no way uh honorable mentions could have gotten bardock or uh could have gotten bardock or jr otherwise i would agree with the list as cooler being such a dominant red unit with two other powerful red units running around i feel that it's the correct position for vegeta right now um i think he means bardock uh get rid of bardock for jiren which I'm, I'm okay with that. And the only reason why I have Bardock on the list at all, I don't think Bardock is anywhere near as good as those other characters are on the honorable mention list. I just really hate his design, and that's a personal vendetta that I have against Bardock. That's all that is. Uh, let me just expand this real quick. Uh, the only debatable unit on the list would be LF Cell, as some of his damaging passes are locked behind fighting a hybrid unit, and there's only one viable hybrid, which is Trunks. I would say Revival Gohan is, is 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 a bit better now than he's been in a while, just because of the movie buffs. But yeah, Trunks and, and Revival Gohan. Uh, so you could replace him with someone like Revival Frieza, as he's a blue unit, and the most dominant color is red. Uh, yeah, someone actually mentioned that earlier as well. We talked about this already. I think if you want to replace Cell with Revival Frieza, I would not argue with that at all. You're, that's perfectly a valid uh, thing to do. Uh, we'll do a few more here. Uh, it's absolutely crazy to see what Cooler did for, for the meta. Ultra Super Vegeta was the literal only tank left in the game, and it's just over for anything that's considered a tank, yeah. The more insane part is he is a perfect mix of Merge Zamasu on his anti-endurance, on main pop with a more crazy mix of androids for how he works, yeah. I think more than anything, more than any actual shift in the meta character-wise, this has been a major shift in the overall balance in the game, and I feel like I've been saying this for a long time, but this is especially like it, it honestly just keeps getting worse and worse is that the the offensive power creep is so much faster outpacing defensive power creep that there is literally no character in the game that can defend like who is going to defend against cooler who's going to defend against dragon fist goku who's going to defend against ultra goji the ultra super like all these characters are doing so much damage that you like you can't realistically and reliably tank these combos and expect to not just lose, right? Dragon Fist Goku off of a Tapion switch is literally doing multiple like he, he's he's getting multiple characters down to half HP because you switch. He doesn't care about he doesn't care about cover change. He's drawing cards from Tapion. His green card is giving him damage. He's gaining damage every time he uses a card. He's building up his ultimate. And then all of a sudden, before you know it, you're just going to get one shot by his Dragon Fist. And then Cooler locks you in and Cooler ults you. And then you have one character left. Then you get rushed. Like, this is how the game has evolved. This is what the game is right now. And uh, I don't really know how they're going to fix this because there's only so much they could do with, like, new passives that will enable characters to tank. Like, wh what are they going to do? I think... One thing they could do, which they we've actually seen them start to do this with Mecha Frieza. Mecha Frieza has damage reduction versus specific types of damage. You know, impact damage, uh, what is it, like explode damage, and whatever the other type is. I guess I think the only the only type of damage he doesn't actually nullify or uh, uh, defend against is is slice damage, which makes sense because he was killed by Trunks. Um, but they can start doing that for more characters. So what if we get again? This is. <laughs> I've been saying this a lot, but this is actually, I think, one of the more likely options for Legends Festival is a tag Super Saiyan 4 Goku and Vegeta. They have 60% reduced damage received as a baseline to their kit, but then they also, on top of that, have 20% less damage received from impact damage, and then, like, 10% less damage received from strike damage. Like, from, from strike cards, or blast cards, or whatever. Like, they have to start stacking up these different types of damage reduction, I think, to even make characters have a remotely viable chance of tanking any kind of hits at all. And that's where we're at right now. The other thing they can do is just completely revamp the way that damage is calculated in this game. But I think if they do that, 
that would just require way too much work. It would basically have to they have basically have to overhaul the entire game. They'd probably have to go into individual characters' kits and change things for each character because of how broken things would get. So I don't know. This is this is a slippery slope, but like we're already halfway down the slope at this point. So <laughs> that's just the way the game is right now. All right, we'll do we'll do like two more. You can also consider the case of six star new LFs versus 14, 14 star Zenkai's. Uh, Bardock is clearly no longer limiting Super Saiyan releases. Um, I mean, yeah, you can make the case he's not limiting the design space of Super Saiyans, because obviously we have Ultra Gogeta and Super Vegito, but is that really a good thing? Do you not want them to limit releases? And then we have like these just ridiculous outcomes where Bardock is. I've had matches where. Bardock switched into uh, Super Vegito, solos my team in like one combo. Like that, that's just dumb. <laughs> like, why, why does Bardock have to do that? Uh, hopefully they give us some good hybrid buffs soon. Well, the problem is like back when I hated the hybrid team, it was because they had the same characters and they were just destroying everything for basically an entire year. Red Gohan dominated this game for a whole year. And once you get to that point, the tag just becomes like boring to play against. Like you don't want to play against the same characters. The same character being the best character in the game for a full year is so dumb. Like it's actually just so stupid. Um, so at that point, yeah, that's that's why I got tired of hybrids. But I will always advocate for teams that need help, right? For example, I think two teams right now that could really use a lot of help are GT and Regen. And for that reason, probably my most wanted character right now, other than Demon King Piccolo is probably some kind of like reviving LF Omega Shenron. He would help regen, he would help GT, he'd help powerful opponent. He'd be on fusion warriors. I mean, he, I don't think he'd be like a mainstay on that team just because of how he works, but, uh, or how, how he would, how he would uh, work with the team, right? He wouldn't really have the optimal, I think, uh, way to be used there. Maybe in the leader slot, I don't know, but, um, or like a super baby two character could be really good. He'd also be on regen. He'd also be on powerful opponent. He'd also be on GT. So. Characters that are able to really come out and dominate the game, but also helping out these teams that really need it, like GT and Regen, that's what I want to see. I don't want to see, you know, the typical Saiyan releases where it's just like, okay, well, we're back to the same Saiyan team. Or I don't want to see Future come out where it's like, okay, Future's just getting buffed every four seconds. Like, give me other teams. Give me other characters that buff teams that actually don't have good units. That would be, that would be a nice change here. All right, let's make this the last one here. Um, I think Ultra Super Vegeta is kind of going to be like Ultra Super Gogeta, so that all the at the moment with color terrorizing the meta, he's broken, but we'll get caught by Cooler with time going on at some point. Cooler's going to drop a bit, or an even stronger unit releases that is purple or a Cooler counter. Ultra Super Vegeta will rise up at the tier list again, like Ultra Super Gogeta does every time. Exactly. Again, meta snapshot format. Vegito individually still probably the strongest character in the game. I don't think I'd have Cooler over Vegito if I was going to be doing like a head to head you know, in a vacuum standoff. Vegito is a more complete character. He's better defensively. I would say he probably is a better green card. His ultimate's probably better, hits harder. Um, he uh, His unique gauge is, it allows him to be flexible. The heal after he takes damage every time is really, really good against uh, quick attack because it heals you every time you get quick attacked with him. Uh, but he's an insanely strong unit. One of the best characters in the game individually, probably still the best, but meta-wise right now, it's just really hard for him to be as effective as he was. Okay. Um, I think that's it. We will end things with that. Uh, if you guys want to let me know anything else, let me know down below. As you guys know, these videos do get a lot of comments and I unfortunately will not be able to get to every single comment, but I do want to keep up as much as possible because I do want to be, again, my goal for this year is to be more interactive with you guys. So um, yeah, hope you guys enjoy these types of videos and I will see you all in the next one.